If you've ever bought or thought about buying a bath filter to help with skin issues, hair health, or just cleaner, safer bath water, only to wonder if it actually does anything, this video is for you. We put five of the most popular bath filters through a full water filter guru shakedown, lab testing for disinfection byproducts, hardness, and metals, plus on-site field testing for flow rate and chlorine removal. We wanted to find out what actually works, what doesn't, and the trade-offs you need to know before buying. Most bath filters make pretty big claims, but we wanted to know how those products actually address stuff that matters most in the bat. Free chlorine, disinfection byproducts, also known as DBPs, and hardness minerals. These types of contaminants can pose skin, eye, and nose irritation, and carcinogenicity risks while bathing due to dermal and inhalation exposure. We tested Santivia, Canopy, Sprite, Crystal Quest, and Tubo, ranking each one using our data-driven scoring system, where contaminant reduction carries the most weight, followed by design, setup, maintenance, and company policies. All testing was done using city water and verified through a combination of TAP score, laboratory analysis, and on-site flow and chlorine testing. Our baseline sample came straight from the bath faucet before installing any filter. Free chlorine measured at 2 ppm within the EPA's safe 4 ppm limit for tap water, but still enough to irritate skin and hair for some people. The lab detected 24.7 parts per billion of chloroform, the only DBP present, which exceeded the protective health guideline level, or HGL, of 0.221 parts per billion by roughly 11,000%. Total hardness was just 17.13 ppm, just above the 17.1 ppm threshold separating soft from slightly hard water. TDS measured 39 milligrams per liter, and pH was neutral at 7.2. We also saw minor detections like aluminum, barium, copper, fluoride, phosphorus, and strontium, all below their relative HGLs, but mostly ingestion concerns, not dermal or inhalation. For chlorine, we used on-site test strips to test the water coming directly from the tap. Chlorine is highly volatile and dissipates quickly into the air, which is why it's always tested on site versus in the lab. Next, we installed and tested each product one at a time and put each through two flow rate tests. A fast flow, which is more representative of normal bath usage. This was the maximum faucet speed without causing overflow out of the top of the filter. And then we also tested a slow flow where we deliberately reduced it. Here, we wanted to test the theory that slower flow means better contaminant reduction due to longer contact time with the media. We timed each run from high-speed footage for precision, converted the data to gallons per minute GPM, and calculated how long it would take to fill an average 30-gallon bath at those flow rates. The real-world convenience tax for cleaner water. Because we had to swap products for each test, it was hard to match the exact flow rate each time. But again, the goal here was really to look at a faster, more normal flow rate versus a slower flow to compare and contrast chlorine reduction versus feasibility. For the lab testing, we collected the pre- and post-filtration samples using cold water only. Cold water helps prevent volatile compounds like disinfection byproducts from dissipating during sampling, giving a more accurate picture of filter performance. Now, if you like seeing water filters put to the test like this, give this video a like and let me know down in the comments which water filter I should test next. Slower flow consistently boosted chlorine reduction, but how slow is slow? Reducing chlorine from 2 ppm down to zero is great until you're waiting 30 plus minutes for the tub to fill. In our field testing, differences between fast and slow flow were quite dramatic. At a fast flow of 1.65 GPM, chlorine was completely eliminated by the Santivia filter. At a slower 0.36 GPM, the result was the same, 0 ppm. That's about 18 minutes to fill a 30 gallon tub at fast flow, or 84 minutes at slow flow. At 2.53 GPM, the Sprite filter cut chlorine in half, 
reducing it from two down to one PPM. At a slower 1.01 GPM, it was fully removed, but now it takes about 30 minutes to fill the tub. At 3.6 GPM, the canopy filter reduced chlorine by 50% from two PPM to one. At a slower 0.6 GPM, chlorine dropped to zero PPM. But at this flow rate, the time to fill the tub would be nearly 50 minutes. At 3.79 GPM, Crystal Quest struggled and didn't reduce chlorine at all. Even slowed to 0.97 GPM, it only fell to 0.3 PPM, about 85% reduction. Similarly, at 3.61 GPM, the Tubo 2.0 filter did not reduce chlorine at all. Slowed to 0.89 GPM, however, it was then completely removed. But at this flow rate, it would take roughly 34 minutes to fill the tub. So slower flow definitely improved chlorine removal, but it came at the cost of time. For most filters, full chlorine reduction would mean waiting at least 30 minutes for the tub to fill, if not longer. The standout was Santivia, which was the only filter to completely remove chlorine at a realistic, faster flow rate without overflow. All the others required the faucet to be throttled way down to achieve similar results, often doubling or tripling fill time. When it comes to disinfection byproducts, I was pretty disappointed with these filters' performance. Our unfiltered water contained 24.7 ppb of chloroform, and after filtration, we only saw incidental changes. The chloroform detection after filtering through canopy actually increased by 6%, Crystal Quest increased by 4.5%, and Tubo by 2%. With Sprite and Santivia, we saw insignificant reductions by less than 1% and 2.8% respectively. In practical terms, that means none of these bath filters provided sufficient DBP reduction. And we saw similar results with water hardness. None of these filters softened the water, and in fact, most slightly increased the hardness detection. Now, that's not actually surprising once you consider the media types most often used in these types of bathtub filters. Many bath ball filters use calcium sulfite as their main filtering material because it reacts almost instantly with chlorine, turning it into a harmless form. When water containing chlorine passes through the media, a simple chemical reaction takes place. The free chlorine is converted into chloride ions, the same safe form of chlorine that you find naturally in table salt. At the same time, the sulfite ions in the media are oxidized into sulfate ions. These sulfates then pair up with calcium ions from the media to form calcium sulfate, a stable compound that stays dissolved in the water. Because calcium sulfite is, by nature, a calcium-based compound, a small amount of calcium dissolves into the water during this process. That's why we often see a slight increase in hardness and sulfate levels after filtration. It's simply a normal byproduct of how calcium sulfite works to neutralize chlorine. In other words, the chlorine is effectively removed, but the trade-off is that a little extra calcium and sulfate are added back into the water, which is exactly what we observed in our lab data. We saw slight increases in total hardness from Sprite 3%, Canopy 5%, Crystal Quest 8.6%, and Tubo 8.2%. The hardness in the Santivia filtered water jumped much more significantly from 17.13 ppm to 74.81 ppm, a 336% increase. This spike was more dramatic than the others, likely due to its intentional mineral blend, which adds magnesium and zinc for what they claim are quote, skin nourishing benefits. So bottom line here, if you're trying to soften your bath water to address skin irritation caused by hard water, a bathtub filter isn't the answer. To address water hardness, you need a water softener, not a chlorine filter. So like I said, most bath filters rely on calcium sulfite media to attempt to address chlorine at faster flow rates. Some include KDF 55, a copper zinc alloy that uses a redox process to also address chlorine and can also inhibit bacterial growth inside the filter. Some others claim to also use activated carbon or vitamin C. But here's the thing, none of these filter media can remove DBPs or hardness minerals like calcium and magnesium. So considering this, our lab and field results make perfect sense. These filters 
can be good at removing chlorine, but they don't do anything for DBPs or water hardness. So now let's look at each specific product in a bit more detail. Santivia came out on top as the only bathtub filter in our testing that could completely remove chlorine at a normal faucet flow rate. That performance gave it a boost over the others in the contaminant reduction category of our scoring. The trade-off was a noticeable increase in hardness and minerals, which aligns with Santivia's mineralizing design. Now, we often treat hard water to remove excess magnesium, which can irritate skin and hair for some people. So if you know why someone would actually want to add magnesium to bath water, let me know down in the comments. Post-filtration, we saw increases in barium by 6%, chloride by 8%, copper by 5%, sodium by 10%, and sulfate by 257%, rising from 5.9 to 21.1 ppm. Manganese and potassium were detected at 0.0012, and 1.16 ppm respectively, where they were absent in the unfiltered water. Fluoride, phosphorus, and strontium remained unchanged. Its design score was also boosted due to the organic cotton bag that cuts down on plastic compared to the other models, though the inner loofah is still made of nylon. At $20, Santivia is by far the most affordable option, both upfront and in terms of replacement, since the entire unit is replaced when it's time. It's simple to install, and for anyone who wants to remove chlorine without slowing faucet flow too much, Santivia was the only one that delivered. The canopy bathtub filter also stands out for design. It's sleek, modern looking, and mostly made of soft silicone instead of plastic. The replaceable filter element does still have a plastic housing though. Performance, however, depends entirely on flow rate. At fast flow, about 3.6 GPM, chlorine only dropped by half. At slow flow, around 0.6 GPM, it was fully removed, but filling a 30 gallon bath would take nearly 50 minutes. As for the lab results, post-filtration, we saw that DBPs were not reduced and rather incidentally increased 6%. Total hardness also increased by 5%, despite questionable marketing language around hard water on the website. Now, they aren't downright claiming the filter addresses hard water, but the way this info is presented insinuates the filter is capable of dealing with the effects of hard water. We saw increases in barium by 12%, calcium by 5%, chloride by 14%, copper by 5%, fluoride by 20%, magnesium by 15%, sodium by 12%, strontium by 5%, and sulfate by 10%. Manganese was detected at 0.0011 ppm, where it was absent in the unfiltered sample. The canopy filter is by far the most expensive at $89, with replacement cartridges at about $37. The Sprite Bath Cure performed predictably. At fast flow, about 2.5 GPM, chlorine dropped by half, and at slow flow, about 1 GPM, it went down to zero. That slower flow means about 30 minutes to fill a standard tub, faster than canopy's slow flow, but still not ideal. Post-filtration lab data showed an insignificant 0.81% reduction of chloroform and a minimal 3% increase in hardness. Aluminum was completely removed, copper reduced by 11%, and sodium by just 1%. We saw increases in barium by 6%, calcium by 5%, and sulfate by 11%. Chloride, fluoride, magnesium, phosphorus, and strontium were unaffected. It has the same standard design as most other bath filters using all plastic. Sprite's Bath Pure filter costs around $30 up front, and replacement cartridges run about $20. At a fast flow of about 3.8 GPM, Crystal Quest failed to remove any chlorine. Slowed to about 1 GPM, it provided only about 85% reduction, down to 0.3 ppm. It was the only filter that never achieved full reduction, even under ideal, slower flow conditions. Lab results showed no reduction in trihalomethane disinfection byproducts. Chloroform actually increased by about 4.5%, despite claims on their website that specifically state it can reduce chloroform. Total hardness also increased by 8.6%. We saw increases in barium by 10%, 
calcium by 8%, chloride by 12%, copper by 52%, fluoride by 20%, magnesium by nearly 19%, sodium by 12%, strontium by almost 6% and sulfate by 6%. Aluminum was again completely removed and phosphorus was unaffected. At $65 up front, it's on the pricier end of the spectrum with replacement filters costing 40 bucks. Tubo is marketed with phrases like purify and 99% bacteria and virus removal, but our testing didn't back that up. At a realistic fast flow of about 3.6 GPM, it didn't remove chlorine at all. This was disappointing since it seems like Tubo has tried to modify the standard bath ball design to specifically prevent overflow at faster flow rates. Only at about 0.9 GPM was chlorine completely removed, which would take about 34 minutes to fill a tub. Again, DBPs were not reduced, with chloroform actually increasing by 2% post-filtration. Copper increased 405%, still below health guidelines, but a clear indicator of its KDF copper zinc media. We also saw increases in barium by 12%, calcium by 10%, chloride by 12%, magnesium by 3%, sodium by 18%, strontium by nearly 6%, sulfate by 50%, and total hardness by 8.17%. Similar to the others, aluminum was completely removed, while fluoride and phosphorus were unaffected. The Tubo 2.0 retails for $65 and replacement filters are $35, putting it right alongside Crystal Quest in terms of upfront cost, but still more expensive than budget models like Sprite or Santivia. It has a lightweight plastic housing, average build quality, and results that didn't live up to the marketing. So which one would I recommend? If your main goal is to remove chlorine from your bath water and you still want to fill the tub in a reasonable amount of time, Santivia is the clear winner. It was the only filter in our testing to reduce chlorine to zero ppm at a more normal faucet flow rate of about 1.6 gallons per minute. The trade-off is that it's not a water softening solution and our lab data showed an uptick in hardness minerals compared to the baseline. If you're willing to slow things down and wait longer, Sprite and Canopy also perform well. Both can achieve full chlorine removal when throttled with Sprite reaching zero at about one GPM and Canopy doing the same at about 0.6 GPM. But when fill times stretch past 30 minutes, practicality just starts to disappear. Crystal Quest never achieved full chlorine removal, and Tubo simply didn't live up to its claims of purifying water. So this project was honestly pretty eye-opening. It proved that these bath filters are really just chlorine reducers, not comprehensive water treatment systems. None made a measurable difference in DBPs or water hardness, arguably two of the most concerning issues in bath water. If those are your main concerns, the best long-term fix is a point of entry system that treats all the water in your home. A whole house system combining a water softener and carbon filter is the gold standard. The softener targets hardness minerals like calcium and magnesium, while the carbon filter removes chlorine, its byproducts, and other chemical contaminants like PFAs before the water even reaches your tap or tub. And for renters, as of now, unfortunately, it seems your options are limited. These portable bath filters can help reduce chlorine if you slow the flow but our data shows that they don't provide broad contaminant reduction despite what manufacturers may claim. Now, if you found this video helpful, you might also like our video about lab testing shower filters. We've already tested nine of the most popular products and plan to test more in a future project, so subscribe to the channel and click or tap now to keep watching.